Good morning, beloved in Christ. Today is Sunday, the 15th of January, 2023, and it's the second Sunday of Epiphany. The readings will be taken from the lectionary, and the celebrant is Reverend Canon Andrew N.A. Topo. Let us begin with processional hymn, Ancient and Modern 242. Ancient and Modern 242. Thank you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are celebrating the Mass for the second Sunday of Epiphany. And our intention at this Mass is to thank God for the gift of life and for bringing all of us to the beginning of this day. In our service this morning, we will pray to God Almighty that he manifests himself to us in the person of Jesus the Christ, who is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. We we'll pray for God's grace upon our church, Accra Re Church, for our evangelistic ministry, for our leadership ministry, when we are praying for the Holy Spirit 
to lead us in the path of righteousness for the name's sake of the Lord. We will pray for our nation, Ghana. We will pray for our president, ministers of state, and all who have been trusted with the responsibility of taking care of this nation. We are praying for special grace upon their life. We are praying for the Holy Spirit to direct them to make sure that the citizens of this nation will be happy and that the welfare of these uh, citizens of this nation will be taken into consideration in their planning and implementation of policies. We will pray for all who have asked for our prayers and we are praying especially for Prof. Chris Adomanku and the sister, Mrs. Christy Adai, who celebrated their 93rd birthday yesterday. And we are praying for God's grace and guidance upon their life. We are also praying for Charlotte Ando, who is celebrating the birthday today. And we are asking for God's grace upon his life. We are praying for Mrs. Christy Cabo Brown, who is celebrating the 74th birthday. And we are also praying for Chris Christy. And our sister, who is celebrating the 60th birthday, our brother, Alest, who is celebrating the birthday. And for all those who are celebrating their birthday, we are praying for special grace upon their life. And we are praying that the Lord will lead them in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. We also remember souls that have been called to rest. And we are praying for Mrs. Joyce Elizabeth Dennis, the 10th anniversary of whose death and burial we commemorate today. And we are also praying for the soul of Jimmy Aluti, who died and was buried last Tuesday. And we pray God's blessings upon his life. And we are praying for our mother who was buried last Tuesday, our mother, Miss Tete. And we are praying that God's grace will be upon her soul, that the Lord will grant her eternal and everlasting rest. And I'll ask all of you to add your own intentions to the intentions that I've mentioned so that together we offer them to the Lord. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and well magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in the Old Testament, it was only the priests who offered sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving on the altar of God. In the New Testament, we are all priests, priesthood of all believers. So before we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving on the altar of God, let us all call to mind sins against God and sins against our brothers and sisters. Let us humbly sit and make a humble confession to Almighty God, saying, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon all of us, forgive us all our sins, and bring all of us to newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To God be the glory, great things he has done. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let us pray to the Father for the gift of peace. Father of heaven and earth, hear our prayers and show us the way to peace in the world. We pray also for your servants and your handmaids who are celebrating their birthday. Alex, Chris, Christy, Prof. Chris Adomanko and Sister Mrs. Christy Ade, Charlotte Ando, and Mrs. Christy Gabo Brown. We pray that, Lord, as they celebrate their birthday, you pour upon them the riches of your grace, and you lead them in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. And also we pray that you have mercy upon the soul of Joyce Elizabeth Dennis, the 10th anniversary of whose death and burial we commemorate, and Jimmy Aloti, who died and was buried last Tuesday. We pray that you grant them the praise of rest, the blessedness of rest, and the brightness of your light through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please sit. Hear the word of God, as it is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 49, reading from verse 1 through to 7. Isaiah 49, 1 to 7. Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me from my mother's womb. He has spoken my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant, Israel in whom I will display my splendor. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing at all. Yet what is due to me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. And now, the Lord says, he who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and gather Israel to himself. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. 
He says, it is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer and Holy One of Israel, to him who was despised and abhorred by the nations, to the servant of rulers. Kings will see you and stand up. Princes will see and bow down because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Beloved, the end of the lesson. Thank you. I waited patiently for the Lord and inclined unto me and heard my calling. The summary praise for this, uh, this Sunday is Psalm 40, Psalm 40. We shall chant the first 12 verses. Psalm 40, verses 1 to 12.
Our second reading this morning is from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. First Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. Let us hear the word of God. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you'll be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the end of the lesson. The gradual hymn is Ancient and Modern 243, hymn 243. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Reading at the first chapter, from the 29th through to the 42nd verse. Glory to you, Lord. Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, reading from verse 29 through to 42. 
The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning round, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John, you be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. Beloved, the gospel of Christ. Still standing, we shall sing the hymn before the sermon, Ancient and Modern, 568. Ancient and Modern, 568.
gracious as I am, make me Savior what thou art. Live thyself within my heart. I shall then show forth thy praise, serve me all my happiness. Then the world shall always see Christ the Holy Child. Please sit and let's pray. Gracious and everlasting Father, we are very grateful to you for the gift of life and for the gift of today. We thank you that you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light to offer you this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. I pray that your word that will come forth to us will be a light on our path and a lantern unto our feet. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, today is the second Sunday of the Epiphany. Epiphany simply means manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles. And in the period of Epiphany, the manifestation story comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12 where we are told that a star led three wise men to come and worship Jesus and they offer him gold, frank, incense, and mer. The manifestation was that the star made them know that a savior has been born, a king has been born. And led by the star, they came and discovered the savior and they offer him gold, Frank, incense, and bear. Good, because the infant is a king. Frank, incense, the infant is supposed to be a priest who will offer his life to save his people from their sins. Mer, the infant is a suffering servant who is going to suffer and be sure that he liberates his people from the bondage of sin. The first Sunday after Epiphany, we celebrated the baptism of Christ. Where in the gospel we are told, after the baptism, the spirit descended upon Jesus in the form of a dove. And the voice spoke, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. The manifestation is that Jesus is the beloved son in whom God is pleased. Now today, the manifestation that God wants us to know about his son is that he is the lamp of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is the lamp of God who takes away the sin of the world. In the gospel story, we are told that John the Baptist was baptizing with water. And anybody who baptized with water means the person is call, calling the people to repentance. So by water baptism, you are being called to repentance. And the baptism will be the mystical washing away of sin. And when Jesus appeared there, we are told that John said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. My dear people of God, in Israel, it is the Passover lamb that is offered. And that is the lamb that is offered for the sin of the people of Israel once a year. And every day too, they offer a lamb in the morning and in the evening for their sins. Now Jesus being described as the lamb of God who take away the sin of the world means the son of God who has appeared here on earth is coming to take away your sin and is coming to take away my sin. That is the manifestation. And that is the good news. That the son of God who has appeared here on earth, he is going to liberate you, he is going to liberate me from the bandage of sin. 
Hither to sacrifices are offered for the forgiveness of sins. But by the appearance of the Son of God, there's no other sacrifice. He is a lamp. He is a sacrifice that is being offered to take away your sin and my sin. And that is a manifestation story that Jesus brings to all of us. John also said that whoever the Spirit will rest upon, he is the person God has chosen for this messianic ministry. And we are told that the Spirit rested upon Jesus, and John gave testimony to this. Now this tells us that John himself was a prophet, but he saw that Jesus was greater than a prophet. Because the spirit he saw descending upon Jesus is a spirit of truth. It's a spirit that when he descends upon you, will free you from the bondage of sin. And so Christ has come so that through him we will experience freedom. Freedom from sin so that we will be set free to worship our God. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, the third thing that John also said was that Jesus is the chosen one. There's no other person chosen for the messianic ministry. There's no other person chosen for the salvation ministry. There's no other person chosen for the freedom of mankind than Jesus the Christ. And therefore, John wants us to know that there is only one Savior, and that Savior is Jesus the Christ. He is the only chosen one. Now, if you go through the scriptures, the chosen one in Israel is the king of Israel. And the king of Israel is coming from the Davidic dynasty. And therefore, if John described Jesus as the chosen one, John is saying that Jesus is the one set apart by God for the salvation of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. The Lamb who is priest, who is coming to offer himself so that you and I will be liberated from the bandage of sin. The lamb who is king, so that in his kingdom, you and I will be liberated from the kingdom of this world into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom where we are going to be priests and chosen people of God. The lamb who is the Messiah, the anointed one, the one who has been selected and set apart for the ministry of salvation. And so in the hymn, Ancient and Modern 176, this is what the writer said, Jesus, my shepherd, husband, and friend, my prophet, priest, and king. Jesus, my shepherd, husband, and friend, my prophet, priest, and king. And that's a lamp. The lamp is a prophet, the lamp is a priest, and the lamp is a king. He is a priest because he is coming to offer himself so that you and I will, liberate, will be liberate, liberated from the bondage of sin. He is a king because he has a kingdom, and he is coming to liberate us from the kingdom of this world into the kingdom of his father. My dear people of God, this is the lamp who is to take away the sin of the world. Now, as we hear the manifestation story, the epiphany story, the question is, are you prepared to put your faith and trust in the lamp of God who takes away the sin of the world? The manifestation is not for manifestation's sake, but Jesus is manifesting himself so that you and I will acknowledge and know that he is the savior he is the one who has come to take away the sin of the world. And I will prepare to believe him. I will prepare to trust him. I will prepare to put our faith and trust in him. Because in the Gospel of John, we are told that he came to that which was his own, but his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave them authority to become children of God. The question is, those who are prepared to believe in Jesus the Christ, those who are prepared to receive Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, are you among those people? He came to that which was his own, but his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave them authority to become children of God. 
In our first reading for today, we are told that there is a servant who has been chosen. And that servant has been chosen for the ministry of recreation. And that, that servant has been chosen for recreation because the sin that is being described in our first reading is that Israel, they are in Babylon. They are in bondage. And therefore, the Lord decided to set them free. And he is setting them free to come out of Babylon to Jerusalem. But Jerusalem, as at that time, is in rain. And therefore, if they are coming to Je from Babylon to Jerusalem, where are they coming? And therefore, the servant that the Lord wants, the servant that the Lord is calling to respond to his call is a servant who is coming to recreate and restore the people of Israel. So the ministry of the servant who is being called in our first reading is for recreation and for restoration. And we are told that he's going to make Israel the light of the world. He's going to make Israel the light of the world. And that brings us to the creation story. We are told that in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and earth was without form of void. And the Spirit of God was moving over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was what? Light. The first thing that God created was what? Light. And so if Israel is now under bondage, if, if Israel is now serving because of their sins, and God decided to set them free, God decided to set them free so that he will recreate their land for them. He is coming to restore them back so that they will be the chosen people through whom the nations will see their God. And the person who is being described, who will bring the restoration and recreation is the Son of God himself, who is Jesus the Christ. And so the first reading is drawing our attention to the fact that the lamp who is being described is the servant of God who has been described in the first reading. And in our second reading, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, derived his apostleship from Jesus the Christ. And Paul, when he has received authority from Jesus Christ, he was able to greet the Corinthians in the name of mercy and peace. And so what is the whole manifestation story telling us? The manifestation story is telling us that we cannot be witnesses of Jesus the Christ if we don't know that he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. For us to be witnesses of the Son of God, we must know that he is a lamp. He is the one appointed. He is the chosen one. He is the one on whom the Spirit rests to take away the sin of the world. And once we are able to believe this, once we are able to accept this, then we are ready to be witnesses of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Paul experienced this on his way to Damascus. As a result, he received his apostleship and was able to give testimony about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. John received this revelation and therefore he was able to say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Andrew and the other disciples believed for themselves that this is the Savior. As a result, they followed him to know where he stayed. And ever since then, they followed him because he's the Savior. This morning, the church is asking you, do you believe Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? Do you believe that Jesus has come to take away your sins so that you'll be free? Do you believe that Jesus is, has offered himself so that you'll be free from the bondage of sin? And do you know that Jesus is the only chosen one through whom you can be blessed with the gift of salvation? As we go through the celebration of the mystery of God, we want you to know that Jesus is the lamp of God who takes away the sin of the world. Let us pray. Gracious and everlasting Father, we thank you through that the celebration of your manifestation has made us aware that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Your word says, today when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. We pray that many who have heard your voice this morning 
will welcome Jesus into their hearts as the lamb who takes away the sin of the world, as the chosen one, as a servant who has been set apart for the work of salvation. We pray that as many as who will believe, you made them children of God to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand and let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his Holy Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We lift up our eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh our help. Surely our help cometh from the Lord, who have made heaven and earth. Yesterday is gone, another day has come, indeed another year has come, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. We thank you for giving us this year and for making your service our delight and our wants your care. May goodness and mercy pursue us all throughout this year. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. This morning, let us pray for the good of the church, our nation, and the concerns of those in need. Father, bringing healing to all wounds, grant us grace to give to our enemies forgiveness, to our opponents tolerance, to our friends our heart, to every child a good example, and to our serves respect. O oh God of steadfast love, transform our hearts by the Holy Spirit that we may use our very gifts to show forth the light of your love as one body in Christ. We pray for the church universal and pray especially for people facing challenges and for political gains. We offer to you Accra Ray Church and we pray for our ministers and leaders, guide and support them and all who contribute to the church vision of service and witnesses. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Let us pray for our country, Ghana. For the freedom of our land, for the rights we possess, and for the security of our laws. Almighty God, you are giving us this good land to our heritage. We humbly beseech you that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of your favor and glad to do your will. Bless our country with industries. Save us from all forms of violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance and from every evil way, in time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thanksfulness. Remind us always that we live by your grace and not by our own merits. Bless our land with peace and unity. Teach us to be faithful stewards of the abundant resources of this land and to harness them and deploy them 
to the effective use of all people of this land. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for our families and our local communities. Bless fathers and mothers as they endeavor to raise their children. Bless their children as they grow under the care of their, and guidance of their parents. Give strength and wisdom to those who are called to raise their children. Be the companion of the lonely and the comfort of those separated from loved ones and the bereaved and asking that they may know the compassion and the consolation of your love. We pray also for those blessed with prosperity that they are still worship, they may provide relief to less privilege and their prayers. Comfort the aged and infirm and assure them of your abiding presence and love now and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, Let us come unto the Lord, who makes things impossible to be possible. Let us bring our individual supplication to the Lord at this moment. Let us bring our individual supplications to an end. And now let us pray for us all. You may be fighting a battle of fear for some time now, a battle of depression, frustration, sickness, or uncertainty. For weeks, months, and years, you have cried to the Lord, I need you now, but he has not uh, appeared. And dear brother and sister, do not be discouraged. This year is your year. You will arrive at a place that God has destined you to be. You will surely be there. God is with you. Your story is not over until you get to where God wants you to be. Keep trusting in him, and he will take you there. He is still there. He is still the same. He will soon be with you, and you roll back the stone, and you call out your name. When it's a few days late, a few months late, a few years late, and all hope is gone, we do not understand why. You have waited so long, but this is God's way. It is not your way or mine, and isn't it great when it's late? He is still on time. He knows the future and holds the future. Oh, our God is great. When it's a few days late, he is still on time. My brother, my sister, the Lord has planned a perfect path for you this year. He has secured a path for you. The Lord will thank you for what we have been through. Help us to wait for your time because you are God. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Let us now intervene for those who have asked the church to pray for them. Chris and Christy are thanking God for blessing them with another year of his goodness and faithfulness. They ask God's continued healing, mercy's protection, direction, and many blessings upon their family. Yeah, Psalm of Praise is, is Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. The sister gives thanks to God for his many blessings, protection, and guidance for her and her children in the past years. She prays for God's continual blessing in the years ahead. Her Psalm of Praise is Psalm 34, verses 1 to 4. Another sister is thanking God for protecting and watching over her and her family throughout the year. 
And for delivering her from a fatal accident, she gives God all the glory. And some of praise is Psalm 23. A brother gives thanks to God for adding another year to his life today, Sunday, 15 January. A sister celebrating her sister birthday gives thanks to God for seeing her through the year. It is a prayer that he sees her through the years ahead, granting her good health, peace, and wisdom to be able to chart her new course. Psalm of praise is Psalm 121. Uncle Aless, together with his family, are thanking God for adding another year to his life and for the many blessings he has bestowed on them. We pray for God's guidance and protection in the years ahead. The hymn of praise is Methodist hymn number 399. In commemoration of the 10th anniversary of the passing on to glory of Mrs. Joyce Elizabeth Dennis, the children and the entire Sapra Grant and Dennis families with love give thanks to God for her life. Their text is Revelation 14, verse 13. The widow, mother, father, children, siblings, Eli families, thank God for the life of Eamon James Akwe Aluti, who was buried on Tuesday, 10th January. He fought a good fight and has finished the race. May his soul rest in perfect peace in the bosom of the Lord. The hymn of thanksgiving is ancient modern 701. The song of praise for all the thanksgiving is, we praise you, O God, our Redeemer and Creator. In grateful devotion, our tribute we sing. We lay it before thee. We kneel and adore thee. We bless thy holy name. Glad praises we sing. Lord, in your mercy. May the Lord bless us all and keep us closer to himself this year. May he make his face to shine on us all throughout the year and be gracious to us no matter the situation. May he also lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. That peace which passes all understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we please stand? We unite our prayers. Together, we pray also for Abigail Dede Tete Aite, who died and was buried last Tuesday. We pray that the Lord will have mercy upon her soul and grant her eternal and everlasting rest. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed by the great mercy of God rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, say to your apostles, peace I leave you to my peace I give unto you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. Favorably grant us peace and unity according to your will, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us wave each other the sign of peace. Our first of a three hymn is ancient and modern 702, hymn 702.
which are continuum of each other mode in 403, in 403. Shall continue of each and more in seventy six him seventy six each and more. Mm -hmm. 